Well met lords and ladies, Jake Kirkbarter speaking and a warm warm welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. Who am I kidding? It's a winter Walking Wednesday so it is not warm warm at all. But there you go. Once you've got a catchphrase you're kind of stuck with it. For the most part anyway. So yes, I have returned once more. Uh, it seems that it might actually start raining more severely. Right now I can feel like trickles. Just small trickles that are coming down, which that's the exact same thing that happened a couple weeks ago where I ended up absolutely drenched by the end of the basically half an hour session that I had. So I'm slightly concerned that might happen again, but I don't actually know. Anyways, but that's, that's, uh, let's get the hard one out of the way, shall we? Because I'm sure that the title is something to do with job this or job that or something along those lines. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know how much I can say about that. What I will say at the moment is that it's unconfirmed. I wanted to make that clear in case the title was somewhat misleading. I hope it's not. I haven't decided yet. But there's not much confirmed. There's still a few admin things to basically work through uh, but uh, and, and also they basically outline like what they actually want me to do because essentially the only thing that I have done so far for them is they wanted some translated content into into Spanish and that's well that's what I was told then I had a meeting with the guy in charge and he then said that they might possibly, considering my skill set, ask me to do some new videos in English and Spanish, which of course would be amazing. So, so yeah, I don't want to get too excited or, you know, jump for joy or anything because, again, they haven't worked it out. In fact, the only thing that I've done so far is send examples of things that I have done in the past and basically everything that might mildly be relevant stuff that I've done stuff that other people have done that I could try to imitate there was there was a lot going on uh, and yeah it seems that uh, in that in that massive list there's some comments that I've got to go through once uh, once I get back from walking Wednesday but overall the guy said that he was going to send it on to a couple of relevant teams and see what they make of it and then we'll see what goes on so yeah I mean I'm in an interesting position right now because I'm I'm going to just guess that by the end of next week I'll be able to confirm or not whether I can actually classify myself as a professional video creator after nearly nine years of doing this so it's, uh, that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. Maybe I'll maybe I'll jump for joy there. Maybe, yeah. So so who knows? I was I was very happy with how that whole thing went down, and, and apparently the the interviewer was happy as well because it's all it's it's always kind of interesting uh, whenever I bring up stuff like Gotcha, for example, to people that have no idea what it is because of course you know I say stuff like oh it's this oh it's what you can do with that where dude make stuff animated and it gives you a lot of tools and people are able to use this and I even mentioned that it's a uh, it's so easy a child could do it literally children do gotcha all the time I'm going to actually no I'm going to carry on this path I'm just going to avoid that but it's just someone in the house so we should be fine, noise-wise. Yeah. There was a lady with a stroller here before. I forgot what actually happened to her. I was focusing to my side. Yeah, I don't know. She just kind of vanished. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that was the first thing that I brought up. And the first example that I sent was season three of The Mutant Girl. I was very clear in all this stuff, the stuff that I sent that... I would, you know, this is the stuff that I did, 
this is the stuff that others did because when you're talking about stuff in a team, imagine if, for example, they were like, oh, well, we want something that you think that's, uh, that's like this. Uh, it's like, oh, well, actually, William did that scene. So it won't look like that if I do it. Or something along those lines. Or, oh, wow, we like how you've uh, managed to source the backgrounds. Oh, there's a custom background made by somebody else. So, yeah, I was very careful with how I outlined everything. I won't go over all the examples because, I mean, technically speaking, I could just say everything because obviously they haven't processed anything, so there's no contracts involved yet. I don't think this is going to be a very secretive project in general. It's, uh, but yeah, I don't want to jeopardize anything. It's just that I know that a lot of people have been, in, they've been rightfully concerned about, you know, my situation after university, so that's uh, so that's that's why that's why I, I I bring it up. And obviously that whole Walking Wednesday I did back in October, where I was very clearly still still extremely worked up over that. Before I started focusing so much on YouTube watch hours, which by the way the watch hours have kind of uh, because of again I've gone back to focusing on job stuff after I got better from when I was sick for two weeks um, yeah the watch hours have essentially stayed where they are like I've exceeded what I did in January people don't remember that's the they have a 12 month period where you have to get 4,000 watch hours so vidIQ calculates all that for me I exceeded what I did last January which used to be the second highest peak that I had in that whole year back when I just had 2.3 thousand overall, now I have 3.4. So, I should continue to go up, which is great. I'm sure it's gonna go to, I am hope the dollar's gonna change to 3.5 sometime. I'm almost at 400 for January, which is honestly great because January, they keep saying is the worst month for YouTube revenue. Well, well, I guess YouTube revenue, maybe it's not for YouTube viewership, and that's why I haven't been classifying it. Maybe that was the problem. I'm using the wrong metric. Couldn't really say for certain there. Um, but yeah, they say that January this is the time when most YouTubers take a break, because it's a performance that is worst, but... Uh, yeah, no, for me... Actually, I actually it's become the second peak once again. Because the first peak was April 2022, and then but that was already been surpassed. So, yeah, I'm still looking at those numbers, even if I, my focus is going to different places. And in fact, I expect a lot of my uh, my watch hours to go up if there's going to be teams of people assessing the stuff that I have just submitted. So. Once again, I've been very careful to outline the stuff that even if even the stuff that I thought was bad, but demonstrated something, one skill that I could do, and that I mentioned that this was stuff that was done years ago, and I could do it better now. So yeah, I spent all day on that yesterday after the after the um, interview. Because yeah, I just got I got more and more ideas. That's that's the thing. Um, at, at first, because this is, you know, just a first job and I'm not, they don't know what they want from me just yet and everything. At first, you might think, okay, well, let's, uh, you know, take it easy and just decide, okay, I can do this, this, and this, and then with that. And in fact, that was, that was my plan for about five, maybe ten minutes. And then my brain did what it did again and was like, wait a minute. I've just been, I've just essentially almost been, I've been given like uh, an amber light, a yellow light to, uh, to, to basically, so they, they submit like all of the skills that I can do. So I made it, I made it clear as well because the guy also offered me like, um, like to, if I could, if I to relocate to Madrid where this all takes place, or to Barcelona actually, uh, that I could do so. Um, the, the thing with that is that I have to think about it. That's not, that's all this information. Obviously, like if I were to intern in like a bunch of other like business stuff, which is where really, which is really the avenue 
that's not my forte. And so I had to clarify, I am an actor and writer first. And, you know, director, producer, all that other stuff, whatever. You know, I'm not, I'm not my dad. For better or worse, I am not my dad. Uh, but yeah, um, mainly worse because my dad's amazing. But yeah, the thing, the thing there is, of course, is like, oh, wait a minute, I can, there's so many other options here. I mean, the stuff that I can do, like, it goes outside the, ba the parameters of videos. Because, I mean, video creation is one thing, but this is a, this is a startup company. So, so, so very much I think, hmm, maybe there's some other stuff that can be done in the interim and, and you know, work it out from there. So, again, all, all very exciting, uh, all very exciting stuff. And I, I won't, I won't necessarily elaborate on what I suggested I should do because, again, that needs to be approved. So we'll find out. I'm just gonna, I could, I need to try and detour around here. Just a uh, bunch of cars, there we go. I'm gonna go into the realms of car dealership. Speaking of car dealership, uh, Monet told me yesterday that she got a license. So, good news all round. Hey Monet, if you're watching this, <laughs> you're, ever, uh, you're ever around the UK, you know where to go now. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, um, okay, back to what I was saying before about Gacha, because the first thing that I submitted, all the first examples, um, were all the stuff to do with Gacha. I tried to separate it by, you know, Gacha first, then like some other analysis things that they wanted to see, and then songs, all of the stuff. The guy said everything I thought was relevant, but I tried to, I tried to sort it by at least like a few like main groups. But yeah, it's interesting going back to what I was saying about how, how pitching gacha works. Because, yeah, wh again, when you look at the actual principle of gacha, when you just see what it is on, on paper, it is a series of applications that allows anyone to create their own animations, comic panels, designs, stories, and, 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 make, and make them. That's amazing. And that's, that's what really, like, like, that's what, like, attracted me to it. So, that's what I always try to transmit about what it is to other people. Now, of course, I, I did mention to the guy that Gacha has a stigma to it, attached to it. Uh, particularly because of the, as of, you know, the, the, the weird side of the community and how it's been misrepresented there. I was expecting some sort of pushback when I mentioned that just, just because I wanted to be upfront about the possibility that yes, maybe if they're trying to appeal to a younger audience in here, that's part of why I've been brought on as a young person myself. I, want, I, uh, I try to, um, I, you know, I, I, they, if you want to know like, what other relevant stuff I could do, I then taught them what VTubers are. <laughs> so, again, but I just wanted to mention that, yeah, there's, there's some stigma attached to Gacha in particular and, that, and how that might actually look if going forward. He didn't seem deterred. He seemed to really be excited about the fact that I was able to create this stuff from scratch. And we'll see, depending on what he says about the Mutant Girl, he might or might not be impressed, considering that season three is the most complex piece of editing that I have actually ever undertaken. And also within that, I actually got the most complex scenes in general. The one thing I sort of underplay is the fact that, um, is the fact that I I constantly look for um, that I, I look for solutions if I don't know how to edit something, which is why I end up getting like the volleyball scene where there's too many characters in the actual script in order to actually make that for 
a full a full gotcha project and well you know you you get the idea um and of course there's that there's the whole you know swimming scenes which i'm doing yet another one of those for episode two of season three which is another whole matter it's uh but yeah that's um i did make it clear which that those things were as well and maybe they'll speak for themselves in the end and speak for my ability to manage and and coordinate with the team which again it's going to be important i highly doubt that even if i'm you know working overseas they'll uh, they'll leave me out of things in fact i know for a fact that's not what's going to happen so yeah but that's what i that's what i i i love about being able to talk to people about gacha that don't know about the whole community and how it's been how it's been tarnished over the years and etc because even if you disclose that information to them they're still impressed i've done it before i during a couple of summers ago we, we went to uh, i can't even remember what city it was anymore but we well, we met some of uh some of my, of my mom and dad's friends uh, and then also our old neighbours from Madrid, in fact. And we actually um, and, and we talked about all, the, the, all that stuff. And of course, their conversations were all to do with to do with like you know the ins and outs of you know of big corporations and the start the things that they help out with the universities that they've actually worked at themselves some departmental mismanagement a couple of times I won't mention names I will not mention any names uh, but uh, uh, yeah so they, there was a lot that was interesting there but I guess obviously a lot of it went over my head but I tried to take part in the conversation because well I was there what else was I going to do just wallow in silence when have you ever known me to be quiet? Especially when there are cars going by and I am trying to speak to an online audience. <laughs> so, of course, I try to, you know, say some stuff, especially when they, when they mention, you know, the, the, the backlash they get on the internet about certain things to do with, like, cancellations, etc., etc. Which, just briefly, the polar folder thing is, is sort of blown over now, as far as I'm concerned. I'm just glad that I put something like on YouTube itself. I don't, I don't mean to actively, you know, search out for Polish audience to try to take away from them by force. Ultimately, it's up to them. So yeah, back to this. But then, but then if they asked me what I was what I was doing, apart from you know, my, I'm mentioning. No, I didn't mention Cyrus. That was because it was right before I pitched it, so I wouldn't have been doing that yet. So I mentioned a, a few of the modules, but of course, there's only so many times you can get asked, oh, so how's school or how's university? And then have them tell you, well, you know, it's this, that, and the other. That's basic small talk. So yeah, I went into details about the Musen Girl, because of course I did. But again, it's interesting having the reaction from people who don't see it. Because they, they get to hear about the, about the actual audience reception. They get to hear that I've managed to find a way to make my own animations very relatively quickly without a massive team of animators behind them, like most animation has been has you know has had for the last a hundred years. And. And ultimately, my word, I tried to divert from the actual main part, but all the cars turn this way. Right, okay. Yeah, they, um... I'm just gonna cut through here, I don't care anymore. 
But yeah, they're all fascinated by it. You know, all of these, all these adults who, who by all means would never have heard of Gartian before, they would never seek it out themselves, and they probably, just because of how algorithms work, would never be exposed to it in the first place. Uh, so, and the same thing happened when I, when I did my presentation during, during third year, a few, a few months later, when I actually went to think about what Gacha actually was and the potential of it, there was only four audience members there and, you know, two tutors, but considering that I even got one person interested, that's a good percentage, I must say. Well, I say interest in trying it. I mean, everyone knew by that point that I, I made Gacha, even if they didn't know exactly what that entailed or were familiar with the community at all. There's actually no path over there, that's great. There's a wall. No wonder one cuts through here. And then here we are, once again, pitching, a, you know, gotcha as a use to an adult who is not only intrigued by what it is, but also curious to see if it can be implemented into what he's doing. Because they, the company had examples that, that uh, they sent me of what they wanted to translate. And apart from a few issues, like they actually kept the text in there, and that's, uh, that's the thing that just gets ignored, but this can take you out of the immersion, that, you know, they also, um, but yeah, they also had like the typical, the typical like company graphics and stuff. If they want a younger audience, they're definitely gonna have to, I mean, they're going to have to see if they can make themselves seem a little bit less corporate. So, that's why I just, you know, threw everything in the wall because, you know, as someone who actually definitely has a younger audience on YouTube, I believe I can help them out. So, there I am, honestly. So, that's a, that's a thing. I hope that I hope that all works out for them. I'm interested to see. In fact, I love it when I'm the first person who I give people their first impression when they started watching the Mutant Girl because they either watch me. Oh, dang it! Okay, I'll repeat myself because I don't know if I that whole last point got removed. There's some I, I love being people's first impressions of Gacha as a concept because I intentionally stayed away from and even called out a number of, of tropes that made the community much less of a, much less of a, you know, something to take seriously. But also some people just started watching The Mutant Girl because they were interested in seeing what I did. Um, Or it just so happens that the music girl was the first thing that they actually came across. <laughs> because that has happened before. And I mentioned it quite a lot, and I, you know, it's discussed in great detail with everyone that I'm around, so... Again... And, it's, and, it's, and of course, I didn't mention this before, but it's lasted for nearly four years now. We're coming up to the anniversary store, which, by the way, I have all the lines episode four, so I'll be delegating Actually, I don't think I can delegate any more, any more scenes. I think I can be done unless someone wants to claim those last two. Let me do my uh, possibly more professional gacha stuff now. But yeah, we're approaching the fourth anniversary and we're still here, which is amazing. And yeah, no, no other show that I've done. I mean, stuff that I've done before has lasted that long. I mean, look at Mars V3. That's coming up on 10 years. But the, the difference there is, of course, that, you know, people actually care about this one. There's a few people who want, who want to see Mars V3, like back in the olden days. But The Musing Girl has lasted consistently and grown consistently. And so I must be doing something right there. So I hope that that's reflected in me sending the latest installment of 
this long, long, long series. Who even knows? It's also somewhat ironic because actually, um, season two started before the first anniversary and had one episode before we reached that goal. And season three looks like it's going to be either on the same, but just the fourth. So you never know. Anyway, what, what I was what I was getting at is that uh, is that some people. I remember one person. I think it was actually BB said that she doesn't watch Garcha, but she does watch The Mutant Girl. And BB is hypercritical of Garcha in general. So, you know that if she's saying it, she means it. And the same for other people, you know? I've had someone say, well, the best voice actor Garcha series they've seen, which I must admit, given the production of others, I'm quite flattered at because they are also pretty amazing. So, yeah, thanks to President Voices for that comment. But yeah, that's what I wanted to do really, is I wanted to... I wanted to partake in Gacha, I wanted to learn how to edit in this other way, manage the team and everything, and... I also wanted to inspire other people to just give Gacha a better name. So, yeah, thanks to... Thanks to this wacky idea that I had in 2019, then... Here we, here we are now, and I might actually... possibly be getting a job as a result of it. Or at least partially. Again, I sent a bunch of other stuff too. We shall see. But yeah. There's of course been times where I was like, oh, you know, it didn't it didn't explode in popularity like lots of other gotcha videos did, especially back when, in 2019, when it was the age of the viral gotcha video that was set up for another channel for the rest of their days and everything. But ultimately, I don't mind. I've done something that they haven't, is that I've kept most of the people who were, who were still, who were there before. And I plan to keep them going because the story, as I said, is not over. Neither for me or for Morwenna. And that is that. So please leave a like or dislike because your opinion matters. And subscribe if you've not done so already. And on that note, until next time, I've got to take my gloves so I can actually turn the camera off. Eh. Farewell.